Now let's revise our inverse tangent graphs. So remember, because the asymptotes for your normal tangent was this way, because we flip it for our inverse, our asymptotes occur pi on two and negative pi on two. And our curve also reverses to look like this. Now what's important is that in your exam, we labeled this with arrows because it's quite different from your inverse sine and inverse cosine where it stops at specific values. Because the domain is all real x, this curve, you can see, it'll keep on going forever. Yeah, and that's why we need arrows to show that. All right, so let's remember this basic shape, yeah? And also asymptotes at pi on two and negative pi on two, where the range is essentially. So the domain is all real x, so it can be anything on the x. Now the range is between pi on two and negative pi on two. And just be careful here that it's greater than and less than, but there's no equal to, right? Because there's asymptotes. So be really careful when you do write that in. And then finally, have to remember that inverse tan of negative x just equals to negative inverse tan x, okay? So the important points here is draw arrows on the end to show that the domain keeps going. And also the range is only greater or less than without any equal to signs because there are asymptotes there. All right, so as similar with your inverse cosine and inverse sine, I'm gonna ask you to memorize this before you move on to the questions. So once you've done that, we can keep going and let's look at some of these questions. So here we have y equals to inverse tan of 2x. Let's find out the domain. So we consider our input, which is 2x, and that is that all real for 2x, right? Because our input we put in with our domain, which is all real. So if it's all real for 2x, if we divide it all by two, it's still gonna be all real for x. So the domain will be everything along there. Now, our range is when we consider the output, and that will be greater than negative pi on two, but less than pi on two. So between there, but not including those points. So sketching the graph, first thing we wanna do is put in the asymptotes. And we're not considering a box essentially because this keeps going forever. So we actually just consider the asymptotes where the range ends. And now we just remember the basic shape of the curve that looks like this. And remember to put on arrows at the end to show that the domain does extend for all real x. Great, so that was pretty simple and quite similar. The only thing is we don't have a box, instead we have asymptotes and we also need arrows on the end of our curve. All right, let's look at this. So here we have inverse tan of x minus one. So the domain is that for x minus one, our input, that's gonna be all real. So if I add one to all the numbers, it's still gonna be all real. So the domain is still everything. But for the range, we want to consider this output, so the entire thing. And because there's nothing in front of it to change it, the range will just be between negative pi on two and pi on two. So remember, it's going to be this, but not including those values, which means there are going to be asymptotes there. And now, the important point here is that because it's going to be negative one, when we sketch a graph, that negative one moves the curve to the right-hand side or the positive side by one. So instead of crossing at zero, zero, it's gonna cross here at one. Whereby if you had X plus one, it would move to the left-hand side one, okay? So although it doesn't change your domain and range, you have to be careful about how the input changes with your minus one and plus ones with how it's gonna look on the curve. So just remember, minus one or minus any number moves to the right by that amount of number, whereas plus moves to the left by that amount of number. And that's quite specific to just your inverse tangent. 
because with your inverse cos and sine, the domain and range determine that. So this is something that you have to remember for your inverse tangent. Great. Let's have a look at this now. So here, the domain, quite simple. We just have x. So it's going to be or real x. Now let's consider the range. The range is when we consider the output, which is just that. So that is between negative pi on 2 and pi on 2. Now to make this look like that, we need to, that's good, multiply everything by 2. So multiplying everything by 2, we have that the range is going to be between negative pi and pi, but not including those values. So when I sketch it, I make sure to put in asymptotes because it's not including those values. Okay, so domain, range, worked out. Let's sketch the graph. So we already know it has to be between the asymptotes. So we just follow the basic shape and make sure we put arrows on the end. So what that two has done, it has just made it taller. Can you see that? How the range has just doubled there. But the central shape of the curve will always be maintained. All right. So that's what happens when the range changes. It's very similar to when we were changing the range for inverse cos and sine. Now let's consider our negatives. So here, the domain will be quite simple because we just have x by itself. So it'll just be all real x again. So everything along there. Whereas the range, what we want to do is start off with the basic range, which is between negative pi on 2 and pi on 2. Then we want to make this look like that. And how can we do that? That's right, multiply by negative 1. So this becomes pi on 2, and that becomes negative pi on 2. But the signs flip. So it essentially becomes greater than negative pi on 2, but less than pi on 2 which is the same as that, essentially. So our range remains the same. Drawing our asymptotes, okay? And that gives us a guide for the graph. But remember what I said with our negatives before? It's exactly the same here. If you have a negative, what we need to do is to flip the curve. So instead of drawing it like that, it now becomes completely flipped this way but we still need arrows because the domain is still all real x, okay? So remember, with your negatives, it looks like this, which is a flipped completely from that one. Great. So this was when we had negative inverse tan x. With the next question, here we want to consider inverse tan of negative x. So firstly, the domain. So this is our input, so it's all real for negative x. But because it's all real for negative x, it's also going to be all real for x. Because when you think about it, all your real numbers multiplied by negative, it's still going to be all your real numbers. So that's everything there. Now for the range, that's just going to be starting off with the original. But what you want to consider is what does that become? And this is the same as negative inverse tan x, right? Which means that I want to make this look like that before I can make it look like the original. So multiply everything by negative 1. Because the sign flips, it still stays between pi on 2 and negative pi on 2. And since I know that this is exactly the same as inverse tan negative x, I can conclude that the range is going to be between negative pi on 2 and pi on 2. So sketching that in and making sure I put in the asymptotes. Now I want to sketch the graph. And remember, because we have a negative x there, we need to exactly flip the graph. So draw it this way instead of the other way and make sure to put arrows on the end. So you can see for all of inverse sine, cosine and tangent, there's a lot of similarities. So for all of them, if we're working with negative x or negative of the entire output, we want to flip the curve.
The things that you need to be careful of with tangent is when we change the input with negative one and plus one, you want to shift the curve. And that is the essential difference with tangent as well as your asymptotes. So just watch out for those two differences when you're sketching your inverse tangent graphs.